Okay, so here we have an Asus G551J. It's a gaming laptop from the Republic of Gamers, as you can see here. This was uh, purchased in 2015. And it's working fine, but it's uh, getting a little slow. And uh, the hard drive's full. Uh, and so what we want to do is uh, rip it apart, uh, do a quick dismantle, and change the hard drive for a solid state drive uh, or a, uh, at least another new spinning disk. Uh, that's faster. So uh, what we're going to do is rip it apart right now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is pull the battery out. So let's do that. Slide that over and this either lifts up or slides out. I'm guessing it lifts up. Uh, yep, lifts up. Out it goes. Typical battery. Nothing too interesting there. Um, that uh, obviously want to make sure it's powered off. Sometimes you have to pull the DVD out. I don't know whether you have to in this case. We're just going to find out. So let's start pulling this apart. So we just take a standard Phillips screwdriver and pull out the screws. Uh, it's always best to lay the screws out in the order that you pulled them out. So there's no mystery of when you try to put them back in if one's larger or smaller or whatever. So I always try to lay them out in that same order. Uh, so this one's stuck a bit. Let's just fish this one out. There we go. Okay, so I've got the two screws out. Sometimes underneath the uh, legs there are screws and you sometimes have to just put your finger on and sort of rip that off. Um, however, uh, as you can see here, just trying to demonstrate that to you that I was able to slide it out. If I wasn't able to slide it out, I would use a card, I would put it in and I would slide around like that. Uh, that's the best sort of pry tool to use if you don't have the proper tools. So let's just slide that out. There we go. Oh, look, the hard drive's right there. I don't have to disassemble the whole thing. Yeah, but we're going to, because it's fun. So I can see in here that there's a, a, a secondary slot for memory. There's the hard drive. That's a SATA hard drive. That's your wireless card. Those two, those two wires are the antennas. One of them will go into the bottom of the unit here. Another one will go up and into the screen. Let's continue to dis disassemble this just for fun, even though we don't really have to. I just need, I'm just going to pull this drive out. But let's just uh, pull the back off completely so we can see the rest of it. So there's a screw at the back here. Okay, so here is the DVD and you can see there's a little hole here. So the way to pull that out is usually just to pop a paper clip in there. And I'm going to have to pull the hard drive out here. Hard drive screws out. And I think I need to eject this DVD. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the DVD around, I'm going to get a paper clip, and I'm going to put the paper clip in the little hole that you can see here, and that will eject the drive. There it is. And then the question is, ah, it does just slide out, that's great. So the DVD just pops out like that, nothing too complex. Okay, so I'm going to pull these two screws out that are on the side here. I don't know that they're required, but they're only going to take a second, so let's do that. So these were under the DVD. There we go. Okay, so I've pulled those two screws out, and now I've seen this pry point. I'm just going to, there's a pry point here. I'm just going to pull this out. I'm going to put my credit card in here, and I'm just going to slide it along and see if we can get this to pop. Let's see here. Yeah, you can see right here that that's now got a nice gap on it and this whole thing is going to come off. And I'm just going to keep working it around with this card and you may hear some snaps of plastic. It sounds worse than it is. Don't worry about it. Just keep going. You, you won't break it. Well, <laughs> you're not likely to break it. There we go. So, okay. So as you can see, I have it apart now, and uh, I don't want to pull it all the way off because I don't want these wires to be, uh, 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 you know, hammered here. So let me just show you what you've got. You've got your, uh, that's your CPU fan, and uh, that's a heat pipe to uh, re reduce the temperature. All right, so one of the advantages of taking this off is I can see that that CPU fan way down in the back here is bunged up with dust and fuzz and junk. So I'm going to take a can of compressed air, and I'm just going to blow it out. Woo! You can't see that on camera, but that's actually quite a file coming out. Uh, sound, it's not your sound card. That is your networking uh, card for your wireless network. Memory, again, two slots. 
and this is an SD card reader and this header is for a solid state drive it says SSD that's nice this would have been one awfully expensive drive if it had an SSD back in the day yeah, I think that's about it so all I've done so far when I pulled this apart is you can see these two cables came off all these cables are the antennas as I said one of them goes to the top one of them goes to the bottom and don't worry about that if that happens to you you can just put it back on they literally are just designed they just clip in so I'm going to do that right now I'm going to put this back push it back down and while I was off camera I did find that there was an additional screw that I had missed right there that was causing me grief so let's pop these back on so these little antennas just clip onto that little head and you just but apply a tiny amount of pressure with your finger and you'll feel it go click and that's it there we go so it just clicked in nicely let's push this all down happiness is so to be clear let's count the number of screws because I did miss one as I said so there's one two three four five six seven eight nine then there were the two over here 10 11 12 13 14 15 I think that's it so I'm going to put this all back together, but I'm not going to have you sit here and wait. We'll speed through it so you don't have to uh, waste your time watching this. So now we have to download Windows 10, which is pretty straightforward. Just do a search for Windows 10 Media creation tool and don't go to any place but Microsoft it's not Microsoft you're not in the right place and uh, ignore the upgrade this PC and click this one download the tool and the tool will download as you can see and when it's finished checking there you go you can just run and what this tool will do is it will create a, an install for you uh, on a memory stick or for that, uh, for that matter, on an external hard drive, it really doesn't make much difference. And uh, we'll run through this really quickly. But I've got a memory stick in my hand. I'm going to pop it in my computer right now. And uh, just make sure there's nothing on it you care about because this is going to wipe it out. So there's the disk I just plugged in. Don't really care about it. Oh, I read that with my lawyer. Getting a few things ready. How exciting. I'm going to skip through this so you don't have to sit here and wait through some of these pauses. Now, instead of upgrading this PC, you select Create Media, create media. and um, I can, no, it's, it's looking at this computer that I'm working on, and that's not the one I care about. Now, it happens to be everything here is correct, but I just want to show you what the options are. So, Windows 10, there can be different options here, 32-bit or 64-bit, or both if you want to create a generic uh, USB stick. Of course, nobody wants anything but 64-bit, and in my case, my language is English US. Now, you say, but that doesn't say whether it's home or pro or whatever. Well, with the exception of enterprise and education, all of the versions will be here. So it's all one image, so you don't have to worry about it. So if you have home or pro, um, and uh, that includes the European N versions and whatever else, they'll all be here. So you just click next, and it's going to say, well, what do you want to do that? Do you want to create an ISO, which is the old thing you used to use if you're making a DVD, which nobody does anymore or you click USB flash drive and of course that's what I want to use uh, and it doesn't actually have to be a flash drive by the way it could just be an external USB drive but it doesn't make any difference so there we go plug that in as you can see it says 8 gig I'm going to click next and it's saying well how about this one yep that's the one I want to use and next and progress and this is going to take about if you have a fast connection it's going to take about 20 minutes and uh, it's going to make a USB stick for you and then we're going to take that stick out we're going to plug it in the machine so let's skip through the rest of this. You don't get bored waiting. All right, so the media creation tool finished and I've removed the USB stick. I can now plug that into any computer and boot off of it. Install Windows 10 clean. Uh, a lot of people will ask what happens with licensing? Well, uh, if that machine had Windows 10 on it previously, it will automatically relicense. There's nothing for you to do other than to, uh, to complete the install and let it connect to the internet and it will automatically activate. If it hasn't already been uh, licensed, if that hardware has not already been licensed in the past, uh, it will not be on file with Microsoft and it will ask for a license key and you will have a choice there, which is to run unlicensed, which will be quite annoying because uh, it'll do things like log you out every 30 minutes and give you warning notices that you're not licensed. Uh, or you can just buy a license either directly from Microsoft or, or online 
and uh, just put, type the code in. And, and then from that point on, that hardware, that PC, that laptop, that device will be licensed for its entire life. So you can wipe it out a thousand times uh, using this process that we've just shown you and it will relicense every time. Just taking my USB stick with uh, Windows 10 on it and I pop it into a USB slot, preferably a USB 3, but whatever slot you've got is fine. Uh, open it up and let's power it up. Okay, so that's uh, normally F2 to get into the BIOS, but it really depends on your brand. On Gigabytes, it's, it's Escape or Delete. Uh, on Dells, it's F2 or F12. It really depends on the brand, so you're gonna have to figure that out yourself. Uh, but F2 is a great place to start, function two. So you can see here, uh, it's come up, and uh, what I wanna do is go change the boot order. I want to boot off of the USB stick that I just plugged in, and you can see that's right here. UEFI, Kingston Data Traveler, that's my USB stick. I'm just gonna press enter on that and it's going to boot off my trusty USB stick and it's going to load Windows 10. And because this machine already had Windows 10 on it, it's going to uh, automatically activate. I do not need a license key. So let's see what happens. All right, so now I'm just gonna run through this. Okay, so sure, that's happy. Check the defaults, install now. All right, after carefully reading that and consulting my lawyer, I decided to accept the terms. I want a custom install. Ah, so the disk I put in actually did have some stuff on it already. So I'm gonna go into here and I'm gonna delete everything. So this was obviously a drive I'd played with before. And we're gonna let this run. And I won't make you wait. So uh, the very first thing you do when you're going to run a benchmark is patch. Second thing you do is turn off your wireless and your antivirus. So let's go through that. We'll go to check for updates. Always a good idea to update the BIOS and firmware as well. Okay, so we have uh, NovaBench installed, we have patched, we have rebooted. And now what I need to do is uh, turn off the wireless. So I'll go down here to do and bedingo. And you want to turn off the antivirus. Before doing any testing, so just go into your settings and say turn off real time protection, which we just did. And uh, before you, yes, there is no antivirus, we know. And before you do anything, you want to go into your device manager, so just right click on the start button and select device manager. And just make sure that there are no bangs. Bangs are those yellow triangles with a uh, exclamation mark in them that tell you that there's a problem, the driver or whatever. Everything looks fine here. In particular though, you do want to probably drill into your video card and that's under display drivers and make sure that your video card is uh, installed correctly. So in this case, you'll see there are two. The HD4600 is the video card that's built into uh, the uh, Intel chip and there's an add-on card here, which is the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960M. So it's a pretty good card. Let's run NovaBench. And just before we do that, let's uh, check a couple of things here. We'll go to Task Manager while we're waiting for that to come up and um, go into Performance. And let's just take a look at the chip here. I'm just gonna right click and select Logical Processors. And you can see here, this has, uh, this is an i7-4720HQ uh, running at 2.6 gigahertz, it has four uh, real cores and four hyper threads for a total of eight cores. You can see it explains that down here. Um, uh, there's your memory, which is eight gig of RAM. This tells you what your disk is doing. Uh, the GPU, this is quite interesting. This tells you where your graphics card is, for, where you're, what it's uh, slowing it down, what's, uh, what's running, what's not. So this is actually relatively new. Uh, and let's get out of that now, because you don't want anything running when you're doing your benchmark. You want to close everything. Okay, so let's click Start Test. Now this is going to take about two minutes and I'm not going to have you sit and watch. Now that's your Nova Bench score. That's 1530. That is an impressive number. The disk speed, however, is horrible. Uh, but that for a spinning disk, uh, that's okay. Now, uh, running a single test, never a good idea. Always run three. There we go. So we have, you know, so let's call this, uh, let's call this 1500 as the speed. Now when I click on the CPU here, it'll give me a little bit more detail, uh, floating ops, integer, so on and so forth. And the disc is, uh, yeah, the disc is really the bottleneck here. You can see that. And that's because it's not a solid state disc. 
Uh, but this is one impressive score, 1500 for a uh, four or five year old laptop. That is not goofing around. Okay, now we're going to benchmark this with a solid state disk. Uh, we're going to wipe it out, reload the entire thing, and go from there. We're just going to take that solid state disk, which is right here. And that's a Kingston 240 SSD now, uh, 200 version 2. And we're just going to put it in and just jam it in. So you put that in upside down, I think. Uh, that's it, and just jam it in. We're just going to put it in loose because we're probably going to put the spinning disk back in. So there we go, let's flip it over now and we will install Windows 10 on it. Okay, so we've got our Windows 10 on a stick. We're just gonna plug that in and power it up. And in this case, we're gonna press F2 to just keep pressing F2 over and over again uh, to get into the BIOS. There we go. And now we use the right arrow button to go over to the last option. There we go. And down to the set, there we go, Kingston. There we go, positive. Uh, press enter and it will boot off that stick. Okay, so we have turned off the antivirus, we have turned off the Wi-Fi, so there's nothing running in the background. You can see the CPU there is not doing anything. We're going to start Nova Bench, so we're just going to, our good friend Eric's going to click start and just type in Nova. And once again, we're not going to take your time, you just will, you can just watch this. You can see this is 1540, 1570, 1540, that's fine. Now you see the disk score at the bottom where it says 83? Look at those numbers. So with the with a brand new spinning disk that's 7200 RPM, we had a write speed of 90 meg per second and a read speed of 160. So where for, let's just do this conveniently, we're five times the write speed and if, let's call it four times the read speed. And this is on a SSD. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, you need to go to an SSD. <laughs> that's the short version of it. All right, if you, uh, you have any questions, please get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. And remember, you can always talk to Eric, better known as Prince Eric. Yay!